going to introduce each of these ladies in their business, and then they're going to introduce themselves. But first, I'm going to bring up our fearless leader, Miss Ashley Kirkwood. Can y'all give her a hand? <laughs> Hello. Awesome. This is going to get good, Ashley. Mm -hmm. Next, I am bringing up the owner and founder, CEO of Unclone Media, Miss Audrey Richman. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together. Don't stop clapping. Next, I'm going to bring up my little sis, Miss Monray Tuggle of Marketing by Monray. <laughs> And last but not least, our little, little sister, Miss Casey Brown of Kairos. Now these ladies are ready to bring the fire, but they're going to only bring the energy you bring, so bring it. Yes. All right. So I am incredibly honored to be up here with my friends. Um, this is a really special panel for me because I love each and every one of these women up here and they have been incredible forces in my life and um, snatched my edges when my content wasn't right <laughs> and told me if I'm gonna have friends in marketing, I gotta get my itch together. Um, and they're great. Here's the other thing, they're also very, very real. So we gonna do, we gonna try to keep our panel to 30 minutes so y'all can ask some questions if that's all right. Say, that's all right. That's all right. If you got questions, say, I got questions. Okay, now make them good. This is a, this is a seven-figure content panel. It's some heavy hitters up here. Now, we didn't go through each of their bios because we're going to let them introduce themselves, and then I got some opening questions because I know y'all personally. Oh, I ain't prepped them, y'all. <laughs> I ain't do no prep. Anything can happen. Stay ready so y'all got to get ready. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so we'll start with you, and each of you can just introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about what you sell and how you got to where you are today. Hello, everyone. My name is Audrea Richmond. I'm a marketing and lunch strategist. Yeah. I'm the CEO of Unclone Media, where we help our clients become the obvious choice in their industry through profitable marketing campaigns. We pretty much sell strategy. We teach our clients our proprietary process for launching and doing it profitably and not feeling like they can't be themselves. So we help you get to the root of who you are so you can sell your products and services with confidence. Love it, love it, love it. Awesome. I am Marketing Biden Monroe. Hey, y'all. Hey. <laughs> All right, guys. So I um, help entrepreneurs and CEOs be able to increase their visibility by accelerating their sales. And so the way that I do that is helping you really maximize your social media account and get your followers into your bank account. So what we really teach our, our customers and our clients is that if enough people cannot see you, then enough people cannot pay you. And so we help you amplify your social media account to make more money. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Black. What? I'm so excited to be here. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Casey Brown. Um, I am the founder of Digital Kairos and a few other companies, but mainly what we do um, is help people win when it comes to marketing. So I own a full service ad agency, um, but what we do a lot of nowadays is actually helping people make short form content. So TikTok, Instagram Reels, things like that, um, to hopefully help them on the back end make more money. Love it. Was that not amazing? Give them a round of applause. This is great. I got to pull my chair up. I can't see everybody. Okay. Let me get myself together. Don't get comfortable. We scared. All this sequence of it. Don't be. She's talking about we scared. <laughs> no, it'll be great. It'll be great. Mmm. First question. Mmm. Should we go easy or hard? Wow. Oh, hey, I love it. <laughs> like, Yay. Dang, family. So proud. <laughs> They're like, y'all can handle it. Give it to them. Cross them. Okay, let's, <laughs> they ain't gonna go back. They'll be like, those black women over there are getting all empowered. <laughs> okay, so I have a question for, I have a question for you, Casey. Of course. <laughs> My question for you is, short form content is obviously huge. And I, what I see happening is that people are following trends. 
So the Alex Hermosi trend is big. That is something that we have like really adopted is making sure that we use short form. And we try to do some tweaks here and there to make it more fit our brand. Are you concerned about how important is creativity in the short form content creation process? Because it seems like a lot of the videos look alike. That's a really great question. And it's so funny because we were actually like just talking about this 20 minutes ago. Um, so let me answer this in two parts. Mm -hmm. One part is, and I tell clients this all the time, there's a reason why things are working, right? Yep. Because they work. Yep. Um, and so I think as of now, right now, the big captions and colors and the Alex Hermosi style is working. And what we were actually talking about 20 minutes ago is I was like, I have this thesis. So my main thing is like, I have a thesis. So I was telling my Ray, I was like, I have a thesis that this won't work for long. Yeah. And what is working, or what I believe, this is just my opinion, uh, but what we were talking about is more lifestyle. It's kind of like yeah. storytelling, like vlogs. Yeah. Imagine, do you guys know who Alex Hermosi is? Should I use another example? Yeah. All right, we know who Ashley Kirkwood is. Right. All right. So imagine if Ashley Kirkwood, right, has vlog or uh, reels, TikToks, these short form pieces of content that are actually like going throughout her day. So she's waking up next to Chris, they dancing, playing with Christelle. Then she's running, putting on a webinar and the power goes out and she finds a lovely place <laughs> to have the conference and all this thing. And she imagine makes a whole documentary how, about it. Uh, but imagine how great and engaging that piece of content would be, right? Not to say that educational stuff is not great and amazing, but imagine how engaging that would be, right? And so to answer that in two parts, I think it's working now, but I think where we are headed and where we should all be thinking about is how can I like share more of my life, um, storytell my life through content? I really love that. Now, do y'all remember when the power went out of my house? Anyone? Did y'all see the documentary we made about it? Oh, so, so how, raise your hand if y'all saw the documentary we made about it. Dang, all right, this works. So <laughs> when the power went out for our house, for those of you who don't know, Jerome, who's our personal videographer, he's in-house. I mean, that's personal, it sounds like he can only work with me. He's our in-house videographer. Um, he was filming the challenge. But when the power went out and I was like, I can't believe this is happening, he kept filming. One of the things that we did last year is we doubled down on video, but Jerome is like at every launch, at every challenge, getting behind the scenes here and everywhere else because of what Casey is talking about. Because several of you came up to me and were like, the power went out, but you kept filming and actually showed us you fixing the power and then you did it somewhere else and recorded the whole thing. So I really, 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 really love that answer. Can I add on one more thing? I like just tangibles, so I want y'all to be yeah. able to write something down. Here's how I think about it. 80%, 80-20, right? 80% of content going forward is, falls in these three areas. Health, love, or like relationships. Um, relationships are not just romantic relationships, platonic relationships. Health, love, and wealth. So 80% content falls in those three areas, right? Health, love, and wealth. 20% more expertise. Love that, love that, love that, love that. So, Mona Ray, mm -hmm. now, you've talked about this before, because I've, I've been on several of your events, and I mm -hmm. attend several of your events, and I'm speaking at, at your <laughs> event coming up in April. Yes. One of the things you talked about was how challenging it is for us sometimes to get on camera, because is my hair right? Is my nails right? Do I look okay? Is it gonna appear okay? I don't have a good editor. What if we don't got? Jerome at the house, full-time, recording everything we do, and we got to go on Canva. Y'all know. I heard AI got people editing now, maybe. I don't know. Right, but, like, right. what do you do if you can't, you don't feel like you either physically or by way of resources can get content done? Is homemade content still okay if you're just starting out? Yeah, so that's a great question. So I would say homemade content actually is preferred. Um, because it makes people feel like they're a part of, kind of what Casey said, they're a part of your life, what you have going on. So all of the content that you see on my page, majority of it is shot by my iPhone. Like, I never try to pull out the camera. It's just actually too much work. <laughs> so 
so I record it with my phone. So I don't think that you have to um, get a professional videographer. I don't think you have to go above and beyond. But what I do think you need to do is create a process so you can make it happen because we have to understand that content is a requirement. So when you switch your brain that this is no longer an option, it's a requirement, and we are now positioning ourselves to always record content. You look over here to my left, you see Casey's phone recording us right now. We're shooting content, right? And so we are always turning our life into the content so that you don't have to over-exude yourself so that you can be able to still get the content. Love it, love it. Was that helpful? Yeah. Man, are y'all are leaning in? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> awesome. So, Audrey, mm. <laughs> mm. we got to dig up a good question for Audrey. <laughs> now, we're going to take this in a different direction with you because you and I, we're very similar <laughs> in that we love IP, yes. intellectual property. And we love content that lasts forever. Yes. High quality books, high quality assets, workbooks, all the things that you all have been getting, that audit, like things like that. Okay. You created these massive, does Calvin have them? I feel like they're always nearby. But she no. created uncloned planners, like physical assets. That's content. Right. Yeah. How did you determine what, why did you determine to take your content from pretty much almost all digital outside of your books to making your brain a physical piece of content? So one of the reasons why I decided to develop the planner was because in 2020 when my book Unclone Marketing came out, my business reached capacity, meaning I couldn't book no more one-on-one -on -one clients, I couldn't book no more VIP days, I was like literally maxed out and I had never seen my calendar this way. And I was like, it doesn't matter. No, it just it doesn't matter how much I charge. I have a limit. Like my brain has a limit. My time has a limit. Everything has a limit. And I'm like, a book is cool. However, I do so much strategic work with my clients. And so I was like, is it possible to take what I do in a VIP day and put it into a planner? That was my initial concept. I didn't want a traditional planner where it's like, what I'm doing today? Who cares? Like I really wanted to. Focus on. It's because we friends. We be like talking like this on the phone. We ain't gonna show y'all everything. The text messages are not appropriate. But, but I, cool. but I wanted something where it was like, if if a client was to come and work with me, could I put my brain into a book? Yeah. It probably was the hardest thing I ever did. Like writing a book yeah. and writing the steps is totally th different than trying to execute it into a product. And so, it took me a year to develop the planners. Oh, it took you a year? Yeah, it took me a whole year. 365 days? And I knew the information. And I knew the information. So working with the team, putting it into a structural process, and now I'm at a place where we're in multi multiplying it, licensing it. How do we get it into more people's hands? How do we train other people on it? So now, Audrea from 2020, who was booked to the max with all these VIP days, can now hire an army or a team of people to be uncloned marketing pros, which is a registered trademark, by the way. Yes, yes, we register our <laughs> trademarks. See about us, okay? Yeah. <laughs> See about us. We, we deep on the trademarks over here. Yeah. Now, one of the things I wanted to, because you said, you said something important. You said 365 days. Did she say one day? No. Did she say one weekend? No. Did she say she went to a weekend event and wrote this beautiful, massive <laughs> planner that she was going to get done and that was it? She said time, right? Expertise takes time. I want you to talk a little bit about the process. How many of you want to have a physical asset to your business? Okay, tell us a little bit about that process mm -hmm. um, and what you learned through that process. And then, Monray, we're going to come to you because you also produce some products overseas. I just want to hear a little bit so about that. So, the first process is knowing what you know and then slowing down enough to teach it to someone else. And I had to think through sequentially after doing all of these VIP days, what's step one, what's step two, what's step three? Well, Audrea, you're not gonna be able to uh, tell the client, you're not gonna be able to emphasize it um, because you're not gonna be with them. Now I gotta emphasize it in diagrams, charts, you know, different flows, different worksheets. So I had to kind of imagine if I couldn't be there, what type of illustration or design can I create where they could still do it on their own? And even with, 
us doing it like that, we still had to create a companion course because it was just too much to put into the planner. Now, as far as the process is concerned, you first gotta have a concept, you gotta have a graphic designer, someone who can design your, what you have in your head, and you also need to be able to art direct the project itself. So it's not just about like, hey, graphic designer, here is my Word doc, go have fun with it. Like, I think a big part of our project frustration and hiccups was working with the designer. Her not getting it right the first couple of rounds. I literally took a month from, to keep from going off. Because I was just like, I need to take a break from this so I can come back and be able to articulate. Because she can't see my vision. Right. It's a and I'm over, here try, I'm over here with sketch pads and this is what I want the worksheet to do. And why are you trying to design it like that? That's kind of boring and whack. And I'm like, this ain't a traditional planner. I kept telling her that. And so really having to teach my team how to think unclone, rest your trademark. So <laughs> it's just one of those things where, and just by the way, y'all, Takora is in the building. She did all of my trademarks, except for Polishing Like a Pro. So yeah. But anyway, I just want to let you know that like that's pretty much what it was like. Once I got the concept, once I had got the design, I then had to send it to China for sampling. Once we got the samples back from China, then it was time to make a decision if I wanted to spend this bread. Thanks. This is this the most expensive project I've ever done. We spent upwards of about $150,000 to get the project done. Mm. But to me, it's priceless because I don't have to keep selling my time. So you're telling me, Ooh. after all that work, you still had to spend money? Absolutely. That's so wild of a concept. So, <laughs> Mon Ray. Well, right, no. <laughs> I'm having PTSD right now. <laughs> how, how does it compare for you? The physical asset, the digital asset, and how did, how did you utilize having a phys how did you utilize having digital real estate mm -hmm. to sell the physical real estate? Yeah, absolutely. So we created our planner in 2020, and one thing, I'm a little bit different. I'm like, I'll figure it out on the way down. I'm just going to jump off the porch, right? Yeah. Like, I'll get the parachute on the way down. So we launched our planner. It probably took us about um, maybe about four months, and I didn't know what I was doing. But I'm a, I'm a firm believer if I just start, I'm going to find more clarity. So we started selling our planner, and I didn't even try to sell the planner. I actually was trying to sell my book. And the planner was supposed to complement the book. Mm. But then everybody was buying the planner. I was like, wait, this is not the plan, guys, you know? And so we sold out of all of the planners. And then we came back. I bought more planners. And when I bought the second round of planners, um, paid all of this money to get them from overseas. This yeah. is in the height of COVID. And I'm like, okay, we done pre-ordered. Everybody's waiting. And these planners just are lost at sea. And I'm like... Oh. Um, somebody needs to go swim. Michael Phelps, go get my planners. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening right now? This is $100,000 on the boat. And y'all are saying y'all don't have any answers. So when I talk to people about starting physical products, especially with starting them overseas, because it is more cost efficient, even though we're talking about six-figure investments, yeah. it's more cost efficient. But you have to understand that a lot of the CEO-ish that go in behind the scenes and have to prepare for those things as well. So we part we got the planners eventually. Our, our customers got them. And then about, I want to say about seven months after we dropped the first planner, I actually turned around and re-edited it and dropped the new planner. So I say that to say that I just keep making it better. And I keep listening to my audience of what, what they want. Because I have a certain way that I market. But if I don't listen to what my customers want, then I'm going to be creating things for me. And I don't buy my products. I am I steal for myself, right? Like, I just take my products, right? And so you have to make your, your products the way that you want your customers to. And the way that I use my digital real estate for my physical products was that I, people needed something to have a part of me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they couldn't afford the classes or they couldn't afford to get in our programs. So I would use, like, we sold 7,000 planners to date in the last three years. Come and on. 
Crazy. That's amazing. Come on. That's amazing. Yes. And so when I look, I actually just pulled the number because I was trying to send the list to the sales team to call all these people. Like, where y'all at? Um, but <laughs> but I pulled the number and I was like, oh my gosh, 7,500 people have bought our planners. And so what that real what that meant to me is that people are using our systems, people are actually using and enhancing their content and their marketing. Now it's time for them to keep up leveling what they're doing. So you got to have clear funnels and things behind that to make sure that you could continue to sell the customer. Ooh, this is good. If this is good, say so good. So good. Yes, with a little drama. I love it here. Okay. <laughs> Casey. So good. <laughs> Casey, first off, y'all, just to give you some insight into the friend group. Here she go. Here she go. Casey, to me, is like the Steve Jobs of our group. Is that like an accurate? I feel like Casey yes. is the Steve Jobs of our group. No, like, definitely. Look, Casey is literally like, oh, look at her. Look how she's and, like up um, here. She's cool. Look at how she's like, sitting. We're over here. Wow. Colored out. Right. Mind you, all three of us share a stylist, right? Casey's like, I am style. Right, right. I don't need additional <laughs> things. I am style. I mean, it is what it is. So, <laughs> this is great. I'm so glad this panel is filled with people that actually love me. This is amazing. So, here's the question to you, Casey. We've been talking about $100,000 investments. We've been talking about digital and physical and real estate and sales and sales teams and things are happening. And there are some people in the audience that are like, this is too much. Hopefully y'all ain't saying that, but I'm going to just be honest. I know some of y'all are like, oof, me, I just did a checklist. Okay, <laughs> so where do we start? Let's say I am here. I don't do any content. It is inconsistent. I hired a VA for $3 an hour who I told to post <laughs> graphics they found on Canva. Ain't nobody liking, ain't nobody engaged, and I ain't making no money. I'm making reels every day, but ain't nobody clicking. I'm just trying my best and it ain't working and I'm being consistent, but I'm not clear. I don't know where to start. Is that anybody? Is anybody cool That's if it. we go there? That's for you. That's for I'll you. I testify. <laughs> where so, do we start? All right. So the VA, um, I love VAs. If you do Me have too. a, I just have to say this though, because I make a lot of content about this and people ask me about this. If you do have a VA just for like editing, um, I want you to stop. Um, I want you to stop that and I want you to start editing your own videos. Um, mm. Editing, and I'll go back to answering your question, but I just thought about this because yeah, yeah. you said VA, but editing the video is actually just as important as the actual content, right? Mm -hmm. And so as Monray said, like I have a mic on, I'm recording some content right now. If I just sent this to an editor, they might just edit up little clips of it, right? But are they actually paying attention to the story or the potential stories that could be told through this content, right? And so we have about 10 editors on our team. All of those people, their background was actually more in like production storytelling and we could teach them pretty seamlessly how to do the captions and do, and do the thing. It's harder to teach somebody how to tell a story, right? And so one little tip. Um, but where do you start, right? There's this thing that I really believe in that when it comes to investments, we either invest time or money, right? Mm -hmm. We either invest time or money, and generally we invest the one or we uh, make more investments in the category that we care least about. I personally, as a daughter, as a partner, as a dog parent, I care, as a business owner, I care a lot about my time. And so I make my investments in money. Right, um, and so if you are deciding where should I invest, if you are a time person, the one thing that I will say, you need to spend 80% of your time figuring out content. If you are a money person, the biggest hire that you can make is somebody that can actually help you with the strategies on how to document your life, how to story tell. Right? You can, like Monterey said, pull up your iPhone, you can record some content, you can edit, you actually can. What you actually need help with is the storytelling side of, of the video, right? Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, no, that was fire. That, that was fire. Does now, that answer your question? Is that helpful? Here, and what I, uh, 
can I just say this? Uh, the one thing I tell everybody, and this scares people, so I've stopped saying it on stages, but I'm going to say it to y'all. Um, I would, before I make any money investments into content, right, um, I would make 100 reels, TikToks, YouTube shorts, whatever you want to call them. I would make 100 by myself. 100. 100. And do that over the course of, like, the next 60 days. Yes, I second that. <laughs> if that's the case, I need to go to okay, phase two. So if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Here's the thing, that's a challenge. That's, I know the mastermind ain't scared. That's nothing. Y'all light work. Light work. Do it. Let's get it done. So now, now here's the thing. Okay, now y'all rumbling. They're like, oh my goodness. Okay, we gonna bring it home. We gonna bring it home. If y'all cool with us bringing it home, say home. Home. Now I'm on break. Yes. Now I know I, this is your jam. Yes, I was ready. You see me. I know. Like, I know this is your thing. <laughs> yes. So how can we quickly create more content with ease? Yes. So once one thing I want to say is you have to do it, right? And the reason why I say you have to do it is because it's like the law of numbers. The more you put out there, the more they can stick. You keep posting three, three and a half reels a month, it's not going to work. <laughs> okay? <laughs> say what I said. Okay. <laughs> talk your talk. So you have to put out more content. So I don't want you guys to be overwhelmed because somebody in here is really packing up their stuff and they're ready to go. They're like, this, no, session, they're not. this session is not for me. Lock right? the door. <laughs> 100 real. You are right. Like, like, oh. Shaking the table. What is happening? Right? But the reason why I say it's not hard is because you just need to flow, right? And so I want to give you guys my content process really, really quickly. Hurry up. Get your pen. Okay? The first step is that you have to have a topic. Every day, you need a topic for the day. What are you talking about? What's the topic, right? And in that topic, you're going to create all of your content from that topic. You're going to create your emails, your Facebook group posts, all the things. That is your topic. Then you identify your purpose. Step two, your purpose. Everybody say purpose. purpose. All right, so now that you have your purpose, now you're making sure that your content has purpose. So is it to educate? Is it to inform? Is it to make people laugh? Is it what is the purpose of the content? Then step three is to identify your call to action. Okay, everybody say call to action. Call to action. It, do you want people to comment, share, like, whatever, right? But you can only have one call to action. And then step four is to actually create the idea. I want you guys to understand that I said create the idea of the video after you created the purpose. Because a lot of you guys are creating content that has no purpose and that's why it's not making you any money. Mm. So then step four is to create the content, create the idea, and then you're going to actually execute that content. You're going to record it. You're going to pick one day. I literally record 90 pieces of content in eight hours. I do not look like this every day of the month. Like, I got one day to get cute, okay? So I pick one day, and that is my content day, and I record for eight hours. I literally record each piece of content. I change my clothes six times. I may go to five different locations in my house, and I just really just record all of those reels, right? And then once you record, then you edit. The reason why it's slowing, you are slowed down is because you're trying to do the whole process in one sitting. You trying to think of the idea. You like, oh, my right case. They told me to post. Okay, let me post. Let me find something. Okay, let me record. All right, now it's two hours later. Now you got to edit. Now you're like, oh, now I got a caption. I got to write a caption. Oh, my God. You posted and nothing happens. And now you're upset and you're saying social media doesn't work. But that means that's because you're so emotionally connected to the content. And so you have to create it like an assembly line so that you can be able to take the emotions out of it and you're just dispersing content. So good. So good, so good. So, so Audrea, I'm gonna take my final question to you. And if y'all got questions, you better line on up. Line on up. Um, we may do one more as y'all get ready. You, a, piece, a type of content we haven't discussed so far that I saw you do really well is you will go live for hours. <laughs> I mean, I had never seen anything like it. I was like, I'm trying to wait till she finishes live so I can call her, but it's still happening. You know what I mean? <laughs> so how have you used live streaming to make sales? Oh, this is my favorite. I love live streaming because I feel like a lot of people struggle with growing an audience or they feel like I can't get in front of people. The quickest way to kind of validate what you do is to go live. It is free. 
you literally pull out your phone, click a button, and boom, you're live. And I think a lot of the times when people are thinking about, oh, I don't necessarily want to go live, I don't know what to talk about, all of the things, I feel like when you go live, it's about speaking. That's what we're talking about here Mm -hmm. at this entire event. It's about you activating your voice and getting as many people to tap in to your vision and what it is that you have. And the quickest way to do that is to pull out your phone. I don't care what platform you choose to prioritize, they all have a live capability. LinkedIn has live, um, you have Facebook has live, Instagram has live, YouTube has live, Twitter has live, Facebook groups got live, like Telegram got live. So literally there's no platform you cannot not go live on. And so when I think about going live, the things that come to mind is like, what's my topic? What's my, I always start my content with introducing myself, talking about three bullet points, so whatever my content is going to be, and then I give a clear call to action. And typically a call to action when I do with my live is something that I can track in real time. So I may use something like a coupon code, or I may have a, a certain URL that's pinned to my, to my link in my bio on Instagram. Or I may have a link that I track in the caption section when I'm going live. Live streaming by far is one of the most lucrative ways that I make money outside of lunching. 100%. Before I had an ad budget, live every day. Yes. I didn't care if it was two people or one person or yes. whatever. And people ask, like, if it's only two people, how do they find out about you because you ask them to share it? Yes. And the more consistent you are, and if you go live at the same time each day, then people can start expecting it. Um, And Mastermind, y'all got 100 live topics, as well as your live outline yesterday, because I do think it's an inexpensive way to get started using your voice and converting. Now, we got long lines on both sides. Can I give one more thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a um, video on my YouTube channel called How to Increase Your Rates for, uh, How to Increase Your Show Up Rates for Your Live Streams. So if you like, I don't want to go, you know, to zero, okay, we can at least get you to like 50, right, <laughs> or 100. So it, there's a video on my YouTube channel. Ardra Richmond is my YouTube channel. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. All right, y'all. Here's how we're going to do these questions so that we can get enough done. I want you to tell us your name, what you sell, and your content question. Make it specific, short. So if you do not have your question written out, write out your question so that it can be clear and concise. Y'all feel me? All right, cool. We'll start over here. Hey. My name is Jamila Moore. I'm the entrepreneur's attorney and business strategist. I help entrepreneurs secure the bag, protect the bag, protect and secure their business and their brand so that they can avoid the costly mistakes that cause them to sabotage the bag. All right, so my question is, when I'm thinking through planning content and doing a call to action, what are some sample call to actions that you've seen that lead to sales? Because it's hard to kind of even get people off the page. Moray? Yes, yeah, so the way that I think about it, I'm not posting. So indirectly, I'm selling it every piece of content. But 80% of my content is giving, so I'm asking for engagement. And so what I want you guys to understand that marketing and sales is two different things. Marketing is how you attract the client. Sales is how you convert the client. And so I post to attract people to get them engaged, but I also have a sales process on the back end to comment 100K or comment this, or now I'm going to your DMs, now I'm getting your email or whatever. So in the back end, I can either call you, text you 100 times or whatever, right, so that I can now sell you. So I want you to separate the the thought in your mind. Marketing is to attract the client. Sales is to convert the client. Mm Mm-hmm. Really, really good. Thank you. Great question. I heard that intro. Love it. Hey, Dr. Daryl. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Daryl, the cute, curvy, confident coach who used to weigh 674 pounds. Now I have the privilege of holding wellness retreats for women who have tried numerous times to lose weight, to lose physical and emotional weight. So my question is, I go live every morning on TikTok. These people are so nosy. And all I do, I call it my COVID makeup. I just do right here. And one time I had like 1,200 people on this live for like 15 minutes. And I'm like, text crew, because I have the cute, curvy, confident crew. No one texts the word crew. So I'm like, what else can I do during the live? And I always have like maybe two points that I'm talking about, but I don't know if it's the planning or if it's just people just want to see me do this little bit of makeup right here. 
You yeah. said that you go live on TikTok? Yeah. I would just, I would. Can we go Casey and Andrea? <clears throat> so what I would, I mean, I think Monterey raised a great point, right? So like going live is marketing, right? Mm -hmm. And especially on TikTok, people are not there to buy anything. Please get that in your head, right? People are there to be entertained and or educated, more so entertained. So I don't know what you're saying about the makeup, but how you keep calling it out, it probably is a hook that gets a lot of people in there. They're like, what is going on here? And so what I would do is not think about it as a sales platform, like Monterey said, I would think about it as a marketing platform and say, how can I at least get these people to follow me, right? Why would I want to follow you? Because you're super entertaining. After they follow you, then they are receiving more of your content that as a byproduct, if I have a call to action that says comment 100K or comment confident, right? Now they're in my sales pipeline. But if I'm just on this live selling, people are going to swipe out, right? As human psychology, we hate being sold to. This is why we hate going to buy a new car. Like we hate being sold to. Now we love buying things though, which is why retail therapy exists. Humans love buying things. And so if I, as the marketer, as the business owner, understand, okay, people hate being sold to but love buying things, how can I just be a person that they like buying from, not a person that is trying to sell to them? Okay. So good. Thank you. Audrey. I was going to say something totally opposite. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bar. I loved it. I was going <laughs> to... So I've been on TikTok as a user. Um, don't even come look for my TikToks this I ain't marketing over there. Um, but as a person who uses it, I've been a part of live streams where people were selling. And to Casey's point, it's always entertaining. And the people who are boring, they get the most trolls. The ones who are the most entertaining seems to engage people. So just because people show up, you still have to engage them. You still have to uh, educate them. You still have to give them a reason to stay. And it's like, um, you know, you, you, we're here at the event, right? And it's like, you know, you hear Brandon say, you happy to be here? Oh, yeah, right? Like, that's engaging you. You have to do the same exact thing in a live stream. I think a lot of the times when people go live, it's like, let me go ahead and press the button. And then they just do their thing, and then they're like, oh, snap, I ain't even tell who I was. Like, you still <laughs> have to have a strategy so for when you go live. It's still your platform, and people will behave in the house that you create. Yes. Bye. Come on. Come on. <laughs> what? What are we talking about here? Dora, what is going on up here? Unbelievable. Lenita A. Massman in the building. Hello, I'm Lenitra King. Right. I own a... Oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. I'm Lenitra yeah, King. I own a full-service PR agency helping health and wellness experts go from the best-kept hidden secret to highly booked in the front of every headline with media and exposure. And my question is, how do I identify a realistic frequency and the best promotional activity to stay consistent and laser-focused when I have an all-or-nothing mentality? So, I'm going to say this. You have to be more committed to the activity than you are the result. Yes. And you can have an all or nothing mentality about the right things. But you shouldn't have it about everything. Like it shouldn't be if I sit down tonight and I do, if I don't do all of my content for the rest of the year, now I'm a failure. My all or, all or nothing, I don't know if it's all or nothing. My mentality is like, my vision is this. I am committed to that vision. If content helps me to reach that vision, then I'm committed to that. Casey and Monray will tell you, like, look, let me tell you something. Monray did our content for Speaker Ready Cash Live. And she, she would, when we first became friends, she would go on my, I would post, she, she had this thing that she would say, she'd be like, y'all out here with them little old videos in your phone. <laughs> yes, dragon With them folks. little ugly graphics over it talking about, this your real. And I'd be like, yo, that was me, dog. Like, I would have an old video, I'd be like, that'll work. Because I was just like, I'm gonna post something. Now, to be honest with y'all, if you go back, all of my lives are still online. I have four, five, 600 videos online. If you go all the way back to the old ones, they weren't good. But for me, developing the discipline of going live daily was more important than getting caught up on how good it was. It will get better if I keep going and get good information. The reels, same thing. I post a reel every single day. Right now, I don't even, I mean, I'm going to show y'all a little bit behind the scenes. 
Right now, how many of you, have you all seen how many reels we've been posting during this event? Yes. Guess who's posting them? Me. Because we don't have a social media manager right now, but I'm so committed to getting the content out, it's more important that it's done than it is that it's perfect. Now back with my team, we're gonna go back and be like, okay, this video did well, this one didn't, these are things that worked out, and then we're gonna get a social media manager and it'll perfect. What you have to, what you have to commit to now is what you're going to do every single day to get better. Mm -hmm. And as you do it every single day and you develop the discipline, that's the first layer, then the second layer is going to be, how do I get better at doing what I'm disciplined at? Mm -hmm. Because if you get disciplined but you don't improve, well then now you flatline. Mm -hmm. So it's not just consistency, it's consistency and elevation. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Of course. Yes, ma'am. Hello, everyone. Hello. Carolyn Gilbert Mitchell of MGM College Services, where I help parents of ninth to 12th grade students reach their college goal without overwhelm, without huge frustration, without huge debt, and enjoying the journey. My question is for all of you. So I am one of the persons that Ashley was talking about where I got to put on, make sure my hair look all right. I got to put a face on, at least half a face. I got to make sure everything look good. That takes a lot to post. So my question is, in February, I posted a reel every day. That took more than eight hours <laughs> for me to do the reel, the caption, and all of that. And I get lost in Canva land. I didn't see but a little bit of increase in my followers. So what would be your strategies without, I mean, just based on what I'm sharing with you, on what would be the most way for me to get some more type of engagement and the right people to follow me? Because they seem to like the Canva work. It takes a lot out of me. If I do things with just me and I'm talking, that takes a lot for me to do that. But I think the followers that I'm getting, when I look at their profiles, they're not my ideal customers. So what would you suggest for me to get more bang for my time with what I'm doing? We can start with Casey and go down, give her um, a quick strategy each. Okay. So what I would say is focus on the content. You have to make good content. Mm -hmm. I tell our, our clients this all the time, right? You have to make good content. What is good content? Good content means I'm going to watch it. It means my mom is going to watch it. It means my little sister is going to watch it. What happens when those three very different types of audiences watch it? The algorithms are going to push that content to more and more people, right? And so I sit down and I say, hey, I could make a piece of content saying, hey, you guys wanna learn how to make TikTok ads? Maybe people in this room would like watch that piece of content, but my mom personally would not. She would swipe right past that, right? She doesn't care about TikTok ads. But if I sit down and say, um, you guys wanna learn how to like make some more money? People love making more money, right? And so get creative with how to make more content or how to make better content. What happens when you make better content, you break through the algorithm. So mm -hmm. now you're going from 1,000 views, 100 views to 1 million views. And I tell our clients this all the time, I'd rather, even if your audience is 1% of those viewers, I'd rather your audience be 1% of a million than 1% of 100 views, right? And so the first thing I would tell you is to just get good, get creative at making good content. And generally that probably is you sitting down in front of the camera storytelling. So my strategy would be, I would want you, one, I want you to think that there's three ways to get traffic, build, borrow, buy, right? There's the only three ways that you can make money, right? And so when you're posting on social media, you're building. Anything, think about anything that you've built, how long does it take? If I build a building, if I, I build something, it's going to take a while. So you can't put in 30 days of effort and say, oh, my God, it doesn't work, right? And so you have to look at the results and see what worked and tweak it, right, and keep pushing it out. What I do want you guys to understand that marketing is just the optimization game. It's just law of numbers, right? So the more you push out, the more that you're going to get in front of more people, the more that you're finally going to get the results that you need to. But if you don't build the skill of consistency so that you could be able to keep this up, then you're not going to be able to get the results that you desire. So I want you to know that it's going to take time. It literally took me, I was on Instagram four years before I got to where I am today. So what I would say, just keep going. Like you have to keep pushing out content, but also making it better, right? Like every month you should be getting better and you should look back at your old content. It was like, girl, that was trash. <laughs> right? And so you just got to keep making it better. <laughs> Can I yeah, ask one thing? Good. Can I ask one thing? So, my right, I post every day across three platforms. Mm -hmm. That's period. The reels uh, was extra. Ma'am, we gon' 
go okay. in order just so we can help all of I, our I friends gotcha. and okay. sisters. I was gonna say, I personally like to create long form content and then go short, um, mainly because I'm a talker. I talk, and it's very hard for me to think in snaps. I can't, and so I, I, I just can't. <laughs> so I create presentations of me speaking about the type of content I want to attract with my audience, and then I go back and cut versions of that long form content that I think would be, to Casey's point, more universal. Because like, there's moments in my content where I'm being a motivational speaker. Everybody loves that. But there's moments where I'm like, this is how you need to set up your launch, and this is your conversion. I mean, nobody cares about that, to Casey's point. So I like to go long to short, and I think everyone here, if you're a speaker, you got some type of presentation. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in the room. Absolutely. And, and clap it up for that, clap it up for that. Okay, yeah. Now, one of the things that I'll say, and I think we have time for two more questions, if my clock is correct. So one of the things that I'll say about the question before is I was only going long to short. And Casey actually challenged me to go short like to create short form content. And it has been a game changer leveraging both. So I am easier long to short, and so for me that was easier to do because I could get, we have, our editor is incredible. Did y'all see that opening video today? Yes. Did David not crush it? He's a storyteller, so it was incredible. But if I didn't have a David who was a storyteller, I think short would actually be easier than long because there's a formula to create good short form content. Can I say something? We Absolutely. were just actually talking about this in the car. The way I think about short form versus long form, short form is for width, right? Short form mm -hmm. is for attention. Short form is for me to get millions of views. Long form is for depth. Mm -hmm. Long form is for me to build community. Long form is to get folks to, to come hear me speak and different things mm -hmm. like that. So that's how I would think about the two and, and how to use them. I really love that. Was that clarifying? That was good. So good. Lisa. Hey, Hey. I'm Lisa Ely and I am the president of Purple Square Group where we get paid to show black women, entrepreneurs, speakers, and consultants how to build and scale team for profit. And my question is, as a woman, if you agree with this, raise your hand, of a certain age, <laughs> don't leave me hanging now. <laughs> Help her out, where y'all got, y'all got amen? Age, how do you get past over 50? How do you get past, you know, people see me saying something and they're like, it was some other message there. What were you really saying? And then like the judgment that comes with that from just doing it and letting it go. Audrey is the elder of our group, so. The elder? <laughs> wow. Wow. Give me your arm. <laughs> This her platform. I ain't gonna Cut come for her. I got you later, though, bro. I had to. <laughs> oh. I had Just, Just keep to, living, baby. Just keep living. I, I, I want to make sure I understood your question. Are mm -hmm. you saying that when you talk and speak, how do you get to a place of just trusting it? What I'm saying is, is to get out of my own mindset yeah. of getting a message or a text message from my aunt from the church. Oh, those lady. people. Right. Got um, it. From, like, from people whoever. That like, you what were you really you trying to say? Yeah, like, mm. those people, okay, this is probably going to sound bad, but honestly, them people don't matter. They, they will never understand what you're doing, what you're talking about. To the day my mama died, she thought I was a motivational speaker. <laughs> She had no ideas I'm out here helping people launch products. I just, my dad just learned a week ago that I could help him start a business. <laughs> like, so like, don't get caught up in that. I think the, you should shift your focus to who can give you money, which is why you're here, and go deep with that and just prioritize that. And just love your family, because you, they don't have the capacity to understand what it is that you're doing. And so it would be kind of rude of you to expect them to understand your vision. Thank Can you. Can I say something? Of course. Can I say something to that? Of so I'm, a, I'm an ex-athlete. I was a ball player. 
And there's one thing, like whenever I'm on the court, there's people in the stands. People in the stands, they make noise. Their job is to make noise. But what does that mean? Generally, after they're making noise, I'm, I'm performing well. I'm doing something that is causing them to make noise. Stay in the arena, like stay on the court, keep going. People in the stands, they are there to make noise. That was good. Come through. Oh, are you about to give them a bar? Are you about to give them a bar? I just knew. I just knew she was about to be like, and when you make noise and you own the court, they gonna come for you, but it's okay, they ain't support. It's all right, cause the black women got your back. Black women are Avengers, where y'all at? Let's go! Let's go! Don't play with our yeah. sister, Lisa. We got you. Where they at? Where the veterans at? We deep in here. Where they at? We got all kind of protection. Where the law enforcement at? Where the athletes at? Where the kids at? You can't mess with us. You can't mess with our people. We got you, Lisa. Please get my Tag me. I'm sharing your stuff. Yeah, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> oh, yes. But this is us like all day, every day. Right, right. <laughs> y'all just get a sneak peek. <laughs> y'all, like, we are really friends. I hope y'all know this. Like, we are really, like, we be doing this at the house. Like, we really friends. I hope y'all know this. Yo, Casey gave it. I was like, were y'all here in the morning? There was a jail. They were like, what? <laughs> and then she just sits back. She goes, you live for this. You love this. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I can't lie. Probably top three moments of my life. <laughs> okay, sorry. No, you're fine. Back to professional lawyer Ashley. No more rapping. <sighs> yes, ma'am, how can I be of assistance to you? <laughs> no. Hello, everyone. My name is Sharde Hollins. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and the founder of Relevant Connections. I help clinicians and educators mold mental health and equity into their everyday systems. And my question is, as someone who um, is, does everything wrong that you guys talked about today and will move forward with the action and do it right, what are some um, key tools to buy so that way we can do stuff like what you're doing right there? Like, what are like some three things that you should have a part of your system to have your camera stand, what kind of mic, like what are just some knickknacks we can go and get, software, yes. That's a good question. They probably have some um, good tips too. The number one thing I would say is audio. So audio is actually like a really big factor. Buy a mic, there's tons of different mics. I like road mics, but there's tons of different things on Amazon. Um, and a light, good lighting is, is really, really good. Um, I heard somebody say editing things. Use whatever editing platform you can use. Um, like whatever you're used to, use that. I personally use CapCut um, if I'm editing something pretty quick. Yes, any other tools? Yes, yeah, so what I would recommend for editing, um, a lot of you guys are talking about long form content to short form content or just editing in this Alex Herbozy style. There's an AI app that just came out called vidyo.ai, V-I-D-Y-O.ai. And what I want to tell you is that you still need to be able to tell the story because it is technology, right? So go in and make sure it's tell it pulled a good clip. But what will happen is it will take your long form video and it will pull out eight reels or 10 reels, up to 25 reels, and it'll edit it for you and everything. But make sure it actually pulls out good clips for you. So that was one tool that I would recommend using. The tool that I like to use is called, uh, go ahead. Oh, it's video.ai, V-I-D-Y-O.ai. And Leo. Leo, um, can you post that link in the Black Women Sell Live Facebook group so that they all get the link and we'll email that out as well. We should make a, tech, a list of all these tools and then we'll email them out to you guys. The tool that I like is called Captions. Mm. It's on, only for iPhone, sorry. For my Android. But I still love y'all though. I still love y'all. Wait, there's, there's, there's Android users here? <laughs> I, Look, how many, she Android, how many down. Android users are here? So, oh. so the, actually, can, actually, actually, the first tool is the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Bruh, look, oh, wait, 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 wait. I think, I think David uses an Android because I can't voice message him. 
We have one on the inside of the house. Nah, he got to go. <laughs> he ain't going nowhere. David, you straight with me. Because of David, Android users, we love y'all. We love y'all too. We will find whatever apps you all need to use, and we'll, we'll put them in the group as well. Leo, I think Leo can handle that. We, ain't no worries. Ain't no worries. I just have the iPhone uh, uh, version, so captions. It's a tool that I love. If you all have seen any of my most recent videos on my Instagram and Facebook page, I've been using captions. Love it. It's literally called captions. It also bleeps out cuss words. So Whoa. that's why I, I mean, like it too. I don't curse in my public content. <laughs> my parents are here. I barely know the curse words in general. It's crazy. Um, Thank you. So, <laughs> can I just add one last point? Uh, yeah. So, kind of on this, but I think just to everybody, one of the biggest things that y'all should really like focus on in your content is hooks. So a yeah. hook can be what you say, that's how most people think about it, but y'all have seen Ashley's content. What is the biggest hook of her content? The biggest hook of her content is the glasses, the sparkles, my girl is gonna come hot pink, yellow, sparkle sequins, like, and be in the camera, right? Now, you all might watch it, but for folks that don't know who she is, it's, it's a cost to stop and see what she's talking about, yeah. right? And so get like intentional about like, how am I hooking people in? I have a short haircut, I'll wear a bright color. Like, I'm being very intentional right now on how I'm hooking people in off of this content. So also get intentional around that. I just had to add that. No, 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 that was really good. And, was really good. and Lisa has a hook, because I think Lisa does a lot in purple, if I'm not mistaken, so I can always kind of visualize her content as well. Lisa, we got your back. You send me them church folks, I know how to deal with them, tell me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you guys, this has been so much fun. We have to wrap it up. Just give us the, your favorite social platform where they can follow you, and they can go check out more information about you. Audrey, we'll start with you. My Facebook group is where I make it happen. It's unclone.group. That's the URL. Love it. So my favorite platform is Instagram. So y'all can follow me on all platforms at Marketing by Monterey. Yes. Um, TikTok at Marketing Case, K-A-S-E. Love it. And as we walk off, if we can get their socials on the screen so you all can take a picture and then follow them and do all the things, that would be great. Okay, they tell us we got to go. Oh, we got to take a picture. This is why I can't be having my friends on panel. That was wild. We were rapping. Epic. Oh, let me get in the middle. Y'all put, hey, hey, oh, wait, okay. Put your hands together for my girls. Well, y'all not taking this picture without me. Oh, no, oh, no. Y'all not taking this picture without me. Oh, no, 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 retake. Of course. Oh, we doing another picture? Oh.